Okay guys, I've gotten a couple of questions about this week's lab, so I wanted to give you guys a few pointers here. So first let's take a look at part A. Part A for our experimental setup, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have some volume of hydrochloric acid and some volume of sodium hydroxide. We're going to add both of these to our calorimeter, okay? It's going to heat up inside of there as they mix together. And it's going to be completely insulated and we're going to be able to measure that temperature as it rises. We're given in our data the volume of the hydrochloric acid, the volume of the sodium hydroxide, the temperature of the final solution when it's all mixed together in there, and the initial temperature of the HCl. We're going to make the assumption that the initial temperature of the HCl is also the same as the initial temperature of the sodium hydroxide. Uh, it's pretty reasonable. If they were next to each other in the lab, you could assume that. First thing it's going to ask you is the temperature difference. So the temperature difference is always going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So in this case, the final temperature is when they're mixed together, so T solution, and the initial temperature is the initial temperature of the HCl, THCl. The next thing it asks you about is the calories or the heat that's released, and we're going to call that Q, okay? And Q is going to be equal to the mass, the total mass of the system, times the specific heat capacity, times the delta T. The mass here is going to be the mass of the HCl plus the mass of the sodium hydroxide. But we weren't given those. We were only given their volumes. So what we're going to have to do is add those two volumes together and then multiply it by the density, which I used a Greek letter rho here for. We're making this easy on ourselves, so we're going to assume that the density here is the same as water and it's just simply one gram per milliliter. Then we're going to multiply by the specific heat capacity for water, one calorie per gram per degree Celsius, and then we just multiply by the delta T that we found up here. After that, we need to figure out the moles of uh, acid that we that we neutralize in this process. So that's going to be the concentration of the acid times the volume of the acid. The concentration of the acid is 1.00 uh, molar HCl. That was in the experimental PDF when we uh, for the experiment. Don't forget to convert the volume to liters. This volume here is going to have to be in liters so that when you uh, multiply it by molarity, you get out moles, okay? The last thing it's going to ask us for is the calories per mole. And that's just going to be the Q value that we have up here divided by the moles that we calculated here, okay? Next, let's take a look at part B. Part B is pretty much the same thing, except for now we're going to have um, one of them be a solid salt that we added in here. So we're going to add some water, we're going to add the salt into the calorimeter, the salt is going to dissolve in there, the temperature will either go up or down um, in that process. We're given the mass of the salt, the temperature of the water, the volume of the water and the temperature of the salt uh, water mix that's in the calorimeter. Again, we're going to do our change in temperature, Tf minus Ti. That's going to be our final temperature will be the mix in the calorimeter. And the uh, initial temperature is going to be of the water. Next, we need to find the total mass. So this time, uh, we knew the mass of the solid salt. We have to add the mass of the water. That mass is going to be the volume of the water times the density. Again, we're going to use one gram per milliliter here. Finally, it asks us for the change in enthalpy. That is going to be the Q value divided by the moles of salt. 
our Q value is going to be the total mass of the system times the specific heat capacity. Again, we're going to use one gram per uh, one calorie per gram degree Celsius here times our delta T that we calculated up here. For the moles of salt, we're going to need to take the mass of the salt and divide it by the molecular weight of the salt. And there's two that they ask you to do. They ask you to do sodium nitrate and I believe magnesium sulfate. I gave you guys the molecular weight for sodium nitrate right here, just so that we're on the same page. Uh, and so you divide that out and put it in the basement here and you'll have the moles of salt. Part C is a little bit trickier. What we're gonna do in part C, we could imagine we had that calorimeter and we have some amount of water in it and we're gonna drop in like a hot metal ball into here, okay? And it's gonna to come to equilibrium. All of the heat that left the metal will have gone into the water because there's no heat leaving the system. This is what we call an adiabatic system. It's all closed off. There's no heat that's able to come out. We were given the mass of the metal, the volume of the water inside of the container, the te initial temperature of the metal, the initial temperature of the water, so two initial temperatures this time, and the final temperature that they both came to when they were allowed to come to equilibrium. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that all the heat came from the metal and went into the water. Mathematically, that means that the temperature, the heat that was lost by the water plus the heat or gained by the water plus the heat that was lost by the metal is going to equal zero. Okay, which we can express as the heat of the water is equal to the negative heat of the metal. So the metal is cooling down, the water is heating up. That's why they have opposite signs from one another. Okay. The heat of the water is going to be the mass of the water times the specific heat capacity of the water. Again, one gram, uh, one calorie per gram degree Celsius times the change in temperature of the water. Okay. We're going to have to do our same trick here. We're going to take the volume of the water times its density times the specific heat capacity. We have our final temperature here and our initial temperature. We can solve all of these. Okay. We have our mass of the metal. We have the specific heat capacity of the metal. This is what we're trying to solve for, right? We have our final temperature here minus the initial temperature of the metal. If we divide by this term and divide by this term over here, we will solve for the specific heat capacity of the metal. And we now have an expression where we know all of these values and can plug them in and chug out what this guy should be. Okay? So that's pretty much it. You guys should now have all the tools you need to be successful with this lab.